Welcome to Morning Mana with Apostle Juliana. Jesus is Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. We worship you. We thank you for this day. This is the day that you have more made. And surely we are going to be rejoiced and be glad in it. We thank you for life. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your finished work of Calvary. We say thank you. We say thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the entrance of your word, bring it life this morning as your word comes to us. May it nourish us, may it encourage us, may it rebuke us, may it take us to where you want to be, to want us to be in Jesus' name, amen. Wow, good morning, saints, again. We are still talking about vision. I'm excited again this morning to come to you so that we can talk, we can share the word of God together. We are still talking about the importance of vision. Yes, we read the scripture in the book of Proverbs yesterday that without a vision, people cast restraints. Or without a vision, people, people, people perish. And we define the word restraint as it's, it's, it's like, it, I mean, it's direction. You know, it's giving something a direction for it to go. And I gave an example of a gutter, like water when it's raining, water goes through a gutter and it's controlled by the gutter and it flows away in the drain. So if there's no that restraint for the water, the water will go anywhere, you know. But what am I saying? That's the same way with our lives. Our lives need to be directed. Our lives need to get channeled. And it's vision which channel your life. Because we said vision gives your resources direction. Given gives your time direction. Given vision gives your being direction. So what's more important in life is to have the vision. And the vision will direct what you do with your life. Your vision will direct what you do with your resources. So it is important for all of us to have vision. It is important for us to have a clear vision. We went to the book of Habakkuk where the Bible says, write the vision down. Make it plain so that those who see it will run with it. So we also said, in talking about vision, there's a writing of the vision. A revision, in, if we talk about vision, is thinking through something. After thinking through, you make it plain. You put it down so that you can follow through what you have given. So there are individual vision, there are ministry vision, there are family vision, there are business vision. So be vision. So it is important for us to put plainly where we want to go so that when we arrive we know that we have arrived at our destination without putting it plainly without defining it we will not know if we have arrived or where we are going so as individuals as families we have to make sure that we put the vision down and i said plan even 20 years from now where do you think god is going to take you to the bible tells us in the book prophets what a man thinketh in his heart so is he so for you to become like, you need to think, you need to specify, you need to put it down. And through the grace of God, God will take us where we believe God wants us to go. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, then I said, I talked about Nehemiah, that Nehemiah picked a vision because of a birthday. You know, when he thought about Jerusalem, when he heard that the city was broken, 
and people in dissolution. You know, he picked a vision, he picked a burden. Then he asked that he could go back and rebuild the wall. So vision will give you burden. I mean, vision will give you burden. Vision will also, I mean, a vision will constrain you. We said it yesterday. It will tell you what to do and what not to do. It was Christmas. There are some people who just spent because it was Christmas. But there are people with different visions. They kept resources. Why? Because they wanted to achieve a particular aim on a particular purpose. Oh, glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. So if we talk about vision, we are talking about, you know, you know, you know what we anticipate in the future. And as believers, the Bible says, For I know the plans I have towards you, says the Lord. Plans to give you a future and an expected end. Normally as believers, we must always be expected about the future. Because the Bible tells us the latter thing, the latter end of a thing is better than the beginning. So concerning your life, concerning your big whatever you know you do we always have to believe that God will make our lives better and better and better and the other day I read a scripture from an, an Isaiah TPT version which says we must be present we must be present in 2021 we must make sure that we live this year yes the past is there let's take it as a testimony let's take it as a chronicle but let us not live there you know, let us not live there. It's our testimony, it's our chronicle, it's our stepping stone for us to go to the future. But it's not the best of our life. God still has got something better and better for us. So we must give ourselves time to think through of our future. Oh, glory to Jesus. Yesterday, I also talked about three things, but today I want to break them down. If we talk about vision, I said we have to talk about foresight. What is foresight? Foresight is the capacity to see the future. Huh? The capacity to see the future. The capacity to see ahead. That's foresight. What foresight do you have? And yesterday we talked about Abraham. When God says, look up in the sky. You know, as many as the stars. You know, or as far as you can see, those are descended. But this is a man who was buried. But because of foresight, he could see the future. That's you. Your vision is not the same as you are. God can give you a vision for millions, but you're going the negative. God can give you a vision for, for to be a parent of many nations, but you are barren. You know, what am I saying? That's what vision does. It removes you from the present. It takes you to the future because it is vision, because it is God's gift. He is a faithful God. It will happen because he who promised, he is faithful. Oh, glory to Jesus. Number two, so if we talk about foresight, you know, it's like, it's, it, it, it's like what, it's, 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 it's like what we can see. It's like telescopic. It's like you are in a laboratory. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Glory. To, no, no, you know, you know, it's like you see the you know, foresight. It's like you see what's far. You know, you know, you know, you, we see what's far and it's, I mean, it's in light. Number two, you know, it's insight. Vision includes insight. When you talk about insight, we are talking about the smaller details. So if we are talking about vision, we are also talking about insight. What is insight? Insight is the smaller detail. So we are talking of vision, talking about insight and knowledge. You must have the details. How do I get there? How am I going to get there? So yes, I must have a bigger picture. I want to have a 20,000 church. That's my dream. I want to have churches in all the nations. I want to lead all the women on earth. Yeah, good dream, good vision, Apostle J. But how, what are the small particles which is going to get me there? It's, it's also true for our families, for every component of our lives that we must have insight. Insight is like a, a smaller details, understanding the smaller parts, understanding things which eyes cannot see. So you have to sit down. You have to analyze and understand. You have to sit down. You have to analyze and understand. As we start the new year, my beloved, there's a time to sit. There's a time to think. There's a time to analyze. There's a time to get details. Where am I? How am I going to get where I want to go? Through God's grace, we have to think. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So the Bible allows us to think. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. The verse is from the abundance of the heart, the man speaketh. 
and the man will be satisfied by you know, a man's belly will be satisfied by the words of their mouth. I think I say and I get satisfied. So it is important for me to sit and to, to sit through the smaller details of where I want to do. So you know vision will help me to to, 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 I mean, to, to, I mean, to put step my day to day steps to allow me to have a day to day walk in my life. Yesterday, we also talked about, I told you about a story about those three men. You know, those three men were on a building site, and one man was asked, What are you doing? He says, I'm putting bricks. He was a bricklayer. The next one was asked, What are you doing? They said, I'm building a wall. So what that man was saying was just a wall. The third one was asking, what are you doing? He said, I'm building a cathedral. The three people, when they wake up every day, their energies are different. The bricklayer will be tired of bricks one day. You know, the wall builder, if there are too many walls and they don't understand, they'll be tired. But the one who have got a vision that this wall, we are starting from bricks, we are going to have walls, we are going to decorate it, and people will sit in. They already saw the aftermath of the building. Why am I saying this? It is important when we are in life that God give us sight. God give us insight and sight to see where we are going. And if you see that, we can see how we get there. And as they go to help us, it energizes us. It makes us to direct our energy. And we, need, we don't need to, to, to waste our energy. Hallelujah. The Lord Jesus Christ had insight. He knew exactly what God had sent him to do. He said, you know, I'm here to do the meat or the will of the one who sent me. We read that, you know, you know, you know, yesterday. And he said, the son of man has come to seek and save the lost. He knew exactly what he had come for. Whatever he did daily, he didn't go around, you know, looking at those who were criticizing. No, 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 no. People were talking about him. He was a man of focus. And daily, his, his steps, the three years he was here, it was focused for the fulfillment of the final vision. As we wake up every day, whatever we do every day, you know, there are details which we can't see. There are details which have to sit down and say, Lord, for me to go there, I need to to these details. But you have to have details, I mean, the vision first, so that we can have details of what you are supposed to do. Don't be a person who is just waiting for everyone else's event. Don't be toasted up and down with people's whatever's program, people's whatever they are doing around you. What do you want to do? Where does God want you to go? God has given us burdens, different burdens. We are all different. What are we doing to fulfill those burdens? The other third thing we must be concerned about if we are talking about vision is the hindsight. If you are talking about the hindsight, we are looking, it's like in a mirror. We are driving. There's a review mirror in all the cars. If you want to see what's happening on the, in the back, you check in the review mirror. If you want to reverse, you know, you check in the review mirror. We are checking at what's on the back. You know, there's a time, if we are talking about vision, as we look back. As we look back, we are there to correct what didn't go wrong. We are there to see, to be helped so that we can cover our mistakes and not continue in some mistakes. It's very important for us. But when we are driving, I don't drive looking backwards. The mirrors are important. I normally check constantly so that I can look forward, but not to stay there. And yesterday, we talked about the wife of Lot, the wife of Lot, who was stand in a pillar of salt. Why? Because she looked back. This morning, as we look back, we don't look back to stand, to stay there permanently. We stand, we look there, you know, to check and correct what you're doing, do well. We don't look there to stay in the past. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. So your vision, it will guide you. The vision, it will protect you. Oh, look at Joseph. It's vision which protected Joseph. That's why he said, I could not, he couldn't give himself to Potiphar's wife. He didn't give himself. Why? He was a man of vision. He said, I could not sin against my God. He was a man of vision, and his vision protected him. So we must talk in life that vision protects. There are things which you don't do because of the vision you have. There are things which you don't do because you believe God. Vision will protect you. Vision will protect you if you go to people who want you to do otherwise, who want you, want you not to serve God. 
in a secret place where there are no friends, where there's, where there's no family, where there are strangers. Vision will keep you. Vision will preserve you. Vision will preserve you from sin. Vision will preserve you from sinning against God. And so your vision will protect you. It's a protector. It's a guider. It guides you. It's a protector. It's a guider. It's an energizer. It makes you do what you are doing. Because you are a person of vision. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. So let's not forget, you know, vision contradicts the present reality. Vision. If you're in the world of vision, you're in the world of faith. Huh? Faith is the substance of the things which are not seen. The evidence of things, you know, which are not there. So vision will contradict your present reality. If you have got a vision, you might not look like your vision. <laughs> you might look miles different from your vision. But God is faithful. God will make you. God will establish you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Vision will change you and does make you, does make you uncomfortable. You know, vision will make you uncomfortable. Vision will tell you, you know, this you are supposed to do. This you are not supposed to do. You know, I said yesterday, there is a comfortable which you, must be, you should make, which is not comfortable. Don't ever be in comfort. And when you close yesterday, I said, don't be like those people say, you know, oh, we are waiting on the Lord. There's nothing about waiting on the Lord. But sometimes we use it as excuses, looking for excuses of not doing you know, what we are supposed to do. You know, sometimes you have to stand up and just through God's direction, we do what we are supposed to do. Oh, glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Vision conceive opportunities. And vision conceive new opportunities. No matter things might look close around you. But a person of vision, if you pray, God is a good God. God will open new opportunity for you. Hallelujah. Vision connects you to resources. If you've got a vision, God is faithful. Sometimes God gives you normally. God gives you a vision bigger than what you are. But God is a good, good God. You know, because the glory is to he to be his glory. You know, he will connect you to resources where you believe in the vision, in the word of God. You know, David built a temple. You know, you know, you know, you know Solomon, sorry. Solomon built a temple. But when he built the temple, he got resources. How did the resources come? Because the vision was there to build the temple. When God called him, he said he wanted to build a temple for God, as God had promised the father. And God was faithful. He built the temple. He dedicated the temple. What am I saying? Sometimes God gives you a vision which is bigger than your resources. So vision first, then resources will follow. In this season, may God raise vision. I mean, a vision in your life which will be followed by resources in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And vision will help you to concentrate your energy. Our energies are limited. Our times are limited. Let there be concentration on your energies because we are a person of vision. We gave an example of the Lord Jesus Christ yesterday when the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know was moving around. He knew what to do and when to do it. This time he departed from the city. He went to pray after he ministered to, pe to, to people. Early in the morning, you wake up and pray. Sometimes you let the disciples go. You be alone. But he knew when ended, he had left him. Another time, when the woman with the issue of blood touched his garment, he said, who touched me? Why? I felt virtue leaving me. I felt energy leaving me. Energy, your energy, it must be focused to your vision as God has given you. Don't waste your virtue through anger. Don't waste your virtue through being angry with other people. There are some people to ignore. There are some people who are not worth the dignity of your anger. Not everyone who cuts you on the road is worth your, 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 your shouting. You are wasting energy. Not every WhatsApp, every email, every status, every Facebook post is worthy of your energy. You can't correct everything in this world. Yeah. So you have to concentrate your energy on what's important to you. Oh, glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. So we have to write the vision down. 
Yes, we have to write the vision down. We have to write the vision down. That must be you, the vision for your family, the vision for your kids. Let teach your children to dream. You have to write the vision down. What is your vision? As a mother, as a father, as a minister of the gospel, uh, whatever, as a professional, as a business owner, if you write your vision down, there are more chances for you to accomplish than just running. You know, it's easy to run around and exert energy than sitting down and planning. If we plan properly, God is faithful. God will see us through. Oh, can I have an amen from the church? Hallelujah. So this morning, it's my encouragement that we become a people of vision. It's my encouragement that we become a people, you know, who, who, who are focus on what God has called us to be in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. What are the characteristics of a vision? You know, which I can, which, which we can say, which we, which we must, and I know all of us, we've gone to school, we've heard this, and it is important for us to have this break down, you know, your vision. We said we have got insight. Break down your vision. How am I going to get there? God helping us we know we serve a God of miracles. We will never discuss the power of God. But why we were there? Remember, you know, this, this woman, she had a vision. She said, I'm not I will not leave my mother-in-law. I'm talking about Naomi now. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus and Ruth. Hallelujah. She said, Ruth said, I'm not going to leave my father-in-law, my mother-in-law. A vision. Wherever you go, I will go. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. She, she planned it. And when the mother-in-law was leaving, she followed her. When she went to the other side, she went, she was loyal to this woman. She went to glean, you know, she went to help to look food, you know, for this woman. But while she was busy, the favor of God found her. She was busy. God honored her. Huh? The owner, she ended up being the owner of the field because she ended up being married to the field owner. What am I saying? In life, vision will take you from the place of despondence. Vision will take you from a place where you can't see anywhere you're going. But because you're a person of vision, sometimes a person of vision, you, where you are, it means like you're like you are landlocked, if I can say that. It seems that no, there is no light anyway. But know whom you have believed. Know what he said to you. You know, she said, I'll follow. The mother-in-law compelled her, please remain. I don't have any son. Please remain. You want to be identified with this child. Please remain. But she followed her through. But she was a hard worker. She wake up to the field and God is faithful. The God who sees saw her when she was in the field. One year, Apostle Charles preached a message that, you know, your bowers will never find you when you are asleep. It made me, I'd never had an office in South Africa. It made me to wake up and go and look for an office to start my business. That message sank in my house. Your, my heart, your bowers will never find you while you're sitting. What am I saying? A person of vision is a person you have to stand up. You have to take action. You have to position yourself knowing that this God will favor you. The favor of God, which is for a lifetime, will come while you are doing something. The favor of the Lord, which is for a lifetime, will find you while you are doing something. Hallelujah. So if you have got vision, you stand on the vision. You follow the vision. I want to look for the, after this woman. This woman, I said, dear, dear people are going to be my people. When she went to the field, she was not looking for a wife. The Bible didn't say she was dressed well like what Esther did, walking so that she could be seen. No, she was busy gleaning. She was busy looking for food. But God being God had better things for him. So as we write our vision down, the God who does exceedingly, the God who does abundantly above what we think or imagine, will also send favor on our path. And you also give us rewards in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Vision must produce action. Vision must produce action. I loved one day. I, this woman was speaking to women, but I thought she was calling. He says, ladies, be aware of many. You know, men, men, if you don't let it, you're married. You know, 
five years, seven, eight years, say, no, no, you know what? I'm going to build a, a, a very big business. Just watch this place, but they've not implemented anything. You know what? I'm going to have trillions of US dollars. I'm going to do this. No, 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 no. It's better to be married to that one. We is already starting and doing something. You know, out there, there are people with very big vision, very big missions, but they are not doing something. Vision must produce action. What are we acting on this year of angels in action and messengers in action? Action. You have to have an action plan. Being a Christian mustn't make us lazy. After praying, after waiting for God, we have to do something. I've never seen in the word of God, the Bible says, Jesus, after praying for three days, whatever, you know, he went and slept for four days. He went down and started to do ministry. He went down and started to do something. You know, and God has got a habit of calling people who are already active. The fishermen were gotten while they were already active. They were already doing something. What am I saying this morning? Vision and action must go together. Vision and action must go to vision, together. And vision, you know, must be given time frame. You know, as we pray, as we wait for God, what are the time frame of whatever we're expecting? God bless you and good men. Have a vision for your family. Go to a vision for whatever God has given you. We are starting a new year. Don't just flow with no restraint. You have restraint in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and God will promote you. God will increase you. And it's there in the word of God. It's not, it didn't just start, you know, you know, now with this motivation, people, whatever. It's there in the word of God. Let's write down. Let's plan. Let's follow through. God is faithful. God is faithful. The messengers and the angels will be released in our path as we take action. God bless you and good morning. Jesus is Lord. If you are not born again, have not received Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, he is the beginning of everything. I want you to pray with me this morning. Say, Lord Jesus Christ, come into my heart. Be the Lord and the Savior of my life. With my heart, I believe. With my mouth, I confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. It's a new year. It's a new year. Outdo yourself. It's a new year. Jesus is Lord. Don't live in the past. God is faithful. He fills our year with great things. He fills our year with great things. Be expectant. Be expectant. God bless you and good morning. See you on Monday. Enjoy your week. You are God, oh, oh, oh. We worship you. Only you are God in heaven and on earth. We worship you. Because you are God, oh. That is why we worship. Not just because of the things you have done, oh. We worship because you are Underneath the earth, only you are God. No one compares, no one contested. Only you, only you are God. You are God. Oh. We worship, we worship you. You are God. Oh. We worship, we worship you. No one can contest it. No one can contest it. Oh. No one can contest it. You alone are God.